then I'll tell you a story, real story. This is not joke, real story. <laughs> I have a retired associate, his name is Kim Sang Ho. And when he was young, in Chungcheng area, his wife died. And so he buried his wife. And after 50 days, he went to a tomb with his children. In Korea, we have high tomb, not flat tomb. And uh, it rained and the tomb cracked and all the children were clawing at the tomb and said, Daddy, Daddy, Mama is breathing. <gasps> Mama is breathing. Kickly, kickly, oh, open tomb. But he said, no, it's rained. This new tomb, so it made crack. Mama is not alive. And children were all crying. So he took children home and gave some money to go out to buy a cookie. He sat down and he was very depressed. His heart was broken. And he was crying, and he was reading the Bible. Suddenly he felt someone came behind and thrust through into his heart with big sword, and he fell. He had massive heart attack, and he died. And I was in the office, and telegram came. Those days they, we did not have fax or internet. So telegram came, Kim sang died. Please organize funeral party to bury him. And doctor already issued a death certificate as a massive heart attack. It was already three days over. So I personally organized the death, the, the funeral committee. And I appointed funeral committee and send, gave some money and sent them to bury him. And when they went, he was there, there, so they washed him. Because in Korea, uh, up until that time, we didn't have any morgue. So in home they washed and clothed and just before they put him in the casket they were singing the last song. Suddenly Kim Sang-ho rose up and all the f ministers ran out of the house. <laughs> they were so frightened. And then he was sitting by his casket and he was waving them to come in and each of them said, you go first, you go first. <laughs> they were so scared, they thought that they were seeing the ghost. And so they made a scram and they came in. And they touched him. And he was alive, he was really alive. Then he was very angry. I'm not dead person, why do you try to bury me? It's, and he said, you are kidding, you were really dead. Doctor issued a death certificate, you, di you died by the massive heart attack. Then he told this story. Since I'm his boss, he tells me very detailed. To others, he would not detailed tell me that story. And he said that uh, when he felt as if the big sword was thrust through his heart, he fell. Then when he was falling down, he saw three stars were falling from the sky. He was watching the star, and when the star came near, there were three angels. And the angels came and said, let's go home. And each angel took his side, and one angel was leading the way. And while he was leaving, he looked around, and there was Kim sang lying down. He said, hey, Mr. Angel, look at that. I am there. That is your husk. You have been living there for a long time. But you are out of the husk. Forget about that. Let's go. So he said, they were coming from North Pole. He said, that there's earth and then from North Pole, there was a super highway toward heaven. And angels and he came to the North Pole and there was super highway. They were sending there and that was moving like a lightning and many people were riding that escalator and going to the heaven. And he said, while he was going to heaven, he saw many stars, big stars on earth. And from North Pole, he was going to, and he asked his angel, how long does it take? One day. It's quite distance. He says, it take one day from earth to heaven. So, finally he arrived to a vast universe. 
This is so bright and so glorious, so beautiful. And finally, he came to the heavenly city, the new Jerusalem. And the door was opened. And Jesus was standing there. And hosts of the angels and the complete spirit were there welcoming. And hallelujah, welcoming. So he was walking in. Then he saw David. He said, oh, Mr. David. <laughs> and David come and shake hands with him. And he saw Stephen. Stephen was there. So he said, Stephen, weren't you very painful when they stoned at you? <laughs> and he said, no, no. Jesus was watching me and I was so full of joy that I didn't feel any pain at all. Then there was a river flowing from the throne. Tremendous big river and so many trees on the side of the rivers and the fruit all over the places. Under there, beautiful benches all over and angels and the people were sitting there chatting and they reach out and take the fruit and eat the fruit. Instantly the fruit will turn into fragrance and come out of the pores of the body. So full of fragrance in the air and beautiful music. Then Jesus said, let's go and worship Father. So he came to a big auditorium. He said, endlessly big auditorium. And millions and millions and millions of people, angels were there worshiping God. Like a waves of sea, they were bowing down, worshiping. And the music and peace and joy were just heavenly and unspeakable. And he joined with them and he bowed down and he was rejoicing and God was like a big mountain's light. He said he could not see his image because he was such a big image of light. Then Jesus said, you can't stand here too long. You must go and see many places. He said, well, my wife died five, five days ahead, so may I see her? As a matter of fact, you are here because of request of your wife. <laughs> so, he, Jesus took him to a glorious mansion. And the door was open and his wife was walking out with a beautiful cloth with angel. And he said, Pastor, she was beautiful. And I laughed because uh, while he was having a uh, church, I would go down to hold meeting for him. And uh, those days there were no hotels. I was living in Parsonage and uh, she would always bring the food. And I tell you, she's a very ugly woman. <laughs> Whenever I look at her, I felt sorry for him. <laughs> so I said, Pastor Kim, you are really kidding. He said, Pastor, no, no. She was like Jesus Christ. Her old image was completely disappeared. She was renewed and she looked like a Jesus. She was so beautiful and pretty. And he said, when I reached out my hand to shake her, she said, no, you still belong to the earth and you can't shake hand with me. But she said, I asked Jesus to bring you for temporary because children were so sorrowful. Jesus heard mercifully my prayer. She said, when you go down to the earth, tell the children that their mother is more alive here than on the earth. And her, their mother is very happy here, glorious. So when you go down, tell them. And also, those boys are all going to become a minister. So tell them to be faithful to Jesus Christ, preach gospel, and let them come on heaven and meet here together. Then he was chatting, and he is especially the back part of her uh, skull was. Uh, shining like a diamond. Then he remembered when in the country on Sunday without going to work in the rice paddy, he and his wife adorned themselves to go to church. And after service they were coming back home, their 
father-in-law, his father was so angry that he took the rock and cast. And that rock hit the, her skull and the, the skull was broken and bled. And he said when he saw her in heaven, that place was shining like a diamond. Di diamond. When you receive persecution, all of those things are going to be paid off. Then Jesus, you can't stand here too long. You have so many things to see. He said, as far as his eye reaches, there were mention after mention. It was real mention, he said. It's not just a mention which we say mention in the world. It was so fantastic. And he said, sir, I want to see my own home. Okay, you come. And he was escorting and he, says he was most amazed because one old woman was coming to his church and she was nobody nothing but she was always cleaning the church and uh, and uh, burning the oven and she was doing all of those dirty chores and no one paid any attention but she died and when he was coming she saw her home and he said it was magnificent beautiful home and a little further, there was an elder who was uh, very proud, a swashbuckling guy. <laughs> <laughs> but his house was smaller. <laughs> then when he came to his house, there was no roof. And he felt crying. He said, Jesus, my home, no roof. He said, don't worry. Your good work is constantly coming up to heaven. With those material, we are completing your house. <laughs> so you go down to earth and you do the work for the Lord and your good work would come up as material and we'll complete the, your roof. Then we will call you. Then you'll come. Then he suddenly said, you must go back quickly. Your friends are going to bury you. Then you have no place to go in. <laughs> And he called those three angels, hurry him down to the earth. His friends are going to bury him. So they took him and they rushed to the gate and someone was calling behind him. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. And when he looked, it was Abraham. And he said, Pastor, I always thought that Abraham was a very old person, but he was very young. Very young Abraham, as young as Jesus Christ. And he came and he says, you are going to back to the earth. Tell the world, tell the people that Christ is coming back very soon. Much sooner than you think. And let them get ready because Christ is coming very soon. Then when he came to the gate, the angel took him and they took the same escalator from, north, from the northern part of the sky to the North Pole. Then when he was coming to home, he could see his room right through the roof. And there he saw his casket friends were ready to put him in casket and there was his uh, corpse and when he stood at the feet of his court angel said dive in they pushed him he dived in he came alive <laughs> this is true story because I have seen with my own eyes and he has worked as my associate in my church now still he's alive and he's working in the prayer mountain. If you ever come to South Korea, if you like to talk with him, I'll let you meet him. And you know, there's heaven to gain, hell to avoid. Jesus Christ finished the death, hell, and he brings the eternal kingdom of God to us.